Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillors, as, uh, as the Chairman's already said, I uh, come with the apologies of our, of our Mayor, Peter Butler. And uh, as you can see, you've got the off-course substitute. Um, <clears throat> I think the submission made by the Central Bay District Council was uh, short, succinct and to the point. And I would suggest that my comments will be very similar. I am making the assumption, of course, that you good councillors have all read our submission. The basis of our submission is obviously for the uh, looking after the benefits of, of Central Oaks Bay, but this has the wonderful uh, side effect that it's looking after the benefits of the Greater Hawke's Bay. And uh, we believe that environmental, ecological and economic benefits are quite compatible and not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> um, the proviso is, of course, so that any increase in intensified farming within Central Oaks Bay must come with uh, the avoidance of any adverse environmental effects. And uh, that, is, that is a prerequisite. And I think, in fact, in your proposal, if I may refer to it uh, for them, that is actually stated that a satisfactory resource consent conditions that are recommended as workable by investors not only looks after the investors but also looks after the environment. Um, we believe that this uh, water storage scheme will bring with it genuine environmental benefits to the health of the Tukituki River. Um, that I want you all to bear in mind that you do have a responsibility to look after the welfare of all of Hawke's Bay, both environmentally and as has been very well pointed out by an earlier presenter, also the economic benefit, the environment of, of Hawke's Bay. And I guess in closing, because as I said our submission was succinct and I wish to be also, is that this is an investment, it's not a donation and I think it has the benefit of being an intergenerational benefits that will accrue from the investment of the stamp. That's it. Short and Point. sharp from Mr Sharp. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Councillor Graham. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just interested in, um, does your council believe that uh, the dam can be economically viable um, given the uh, Board of Inquiry's draft? If there's no alteration of the draft, do you think the viability is there? Um, look, I'm not expert enough to say whether it's going to be economically viable. I would suggest that uh, if the uptake, which is also a uh, pre-requirement for investment, reaches the 40 million cubic metres, I would suggest that those don't know a lot more than I would uh, suggest that it is economically viable. Thank you. Councillor Pipe. In your discussions around your table at uh, the Central Hawke's Bay District Council, um, you've obviously canvassed a whole wide range of benefits for proceeding with the Rotanifa. What would do you say are the more immediate benefits for those of your ratepayers, and then what would be the wider benefits that you alluded to earlier on for the whole Hawke's Bay? Well, I would suggest that at the, the, at the build we will um, actually end up with more ratepayers, which of course is going to be a benefit to, to any council, um, as, as I'm sure you'd like a greater rate take. Um, in fact, it would probably benefit you as well, because our average uh, regional rate is actually higher than anyone else in Hawke's Bay. Um, so that would be the immediate benefit and the ongoing benefits for, of intensified farming is obviously labour and the on-flow maintenance and uh, I don't think I need to tell you that for every five jobs created another one comes along. Wider benefits? Oh, for all folks pay well, um, processing would be done in Hastings, the port would be used, so well, I mean the more employment, I, I think the figures are around 2,000 new jobs, so if that's not a benefit to Hawke's Bay, I'm not sure it is. <coughs> Councillor Barker. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I'll forego the precedent set by uh, Mr Councillor Pipe in getting two questions, and ask simply one. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do you believe that the, uh, this regional council should exercise the highest standards of fiduciary responsibility in making its decision on investing the $80 million into the Ruritana for water storage. And in doing so, the regional councillors must have access to a complete and updated business case 
and they must be able to assure themselves, assure themselves that the conditions precedent, such as the 40 million cubic metres, uh, are, are met, and assure themselves mm -hmm. that it's unconditional to take and unconditional to supply. I think the Regional Council has an obligation to always have as much information as is available and that you have a responsibility to look at all the available information and that I think it is very sensible that you have a minimum level of 40 million cubic metres of uptake and that, that uh, yes, you, you are assured that that uptake is genuine. Well, that's it. I've got another question. Oh, I have no oh, sorry, Councillor Scott. <coughs> I would have talked for 10 minutes if I didn't want to take questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr Sharp. Do you believe you've, you've followed this process pretty closely? Do you believe the Council has enough information that condition precedent is in a position to make a decision on investment? I think uh, that the Council has been kept abreast of developments, but of course we are not making this decision, you are. And so um, we, and, and, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Council, so I have to be careful because sometimes one's personal opinion slips through. Um, but I have complete, I'm assuming that this Council is well informed and you will make an informed decision. I'm not making that decision, but we're very happy with the level of information that we have received from the Regional Council and their staff at different briefing times. Thank you. Further. No one. Uh, Mr Sharp, uh, I know you didn't write this letter and um, are not responsible for the emotive language, <laughs> but given that it is written, um, that gross dereliction of our duty, um, do you agree that uh, the precedence that, uh, that that is subject to the precedence, that uh, that's just not an open statement? Um, I, I, mean, I will have to couch this carefully because it is a personal opinion. I actually quite like the term. I think it's got a nice ring to it. And I think it obviously sent a message to you that we're not just think this is a good idea, uh, that maybe it is actually, well, it's exceptionally important to Hawke's Bay. And I think uh, it's a rather nice term. It runs off the tongue rather nicely. Gross dereliction of duty. I mean, I'm quite sure one or two might have heard it before. Well, thank you. But Mr. Oh, Moy, just, Mr. Moy, just sorry, yeah. a, a brand new one. So, um, do you think generally the Central Hawke's Bay public are happy that the council are invest, uh, considered investing a huge amount of money? Um, I, I think the yeah. Central Hawke's Bay people. Um, I again, um, no, no definite proof of this, but a yes, I think the answer is a categorical yes. Uh, the vast majority of Central Hawke's Bay people are behind the investment in this scheme. Um, we'll get a better idea um, as the, our St Hawke's Bay District Council are also proposing to invest in the scheme and that is out for public submission at the moment. Sorry, I'll uh, be meaning St Hawke's Bay. Five million. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's out for public submission, uh, out for at the moment to uh, receive submission. So uh, there's no way that I could form an opinion on that because uh, I've got to wait to hear and see, see what the public re response to that is and that will be shortly. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barker and then I want, I want to return to the uh, phrase gross direction of responsibility. It would have been good if it hadn't been original, but it's not. But what I, what I want to... <coughs> I said, I thought you Michael, may have heard it sorry, before. Sorry, sorry. Microphone, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, good. But what I, what I want to know is, is Central Hawke's Bay Council saying to this council that it should push aside the conditions precedent and all of the other consideration, environmental, economic, etc., and simply make the decision to invest? Is that what this means? No. No, what it is saying, because we are aware of the conditions that you have on the investment of up to $80 million. And so bearing those in mind, if those are all met, then, yes, you're starting to become grossly negligent. Become. Well, Sorry. there's plenty of room to move there, Councillor Barker. I'm sure you know, you're aware of that. You've... Councillor Belford, last question. We're 40. Oh, you're OK. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I hope the message is clear. Deputy Mayor, and our. our um... Right, well, we've, we've finished this session. Um... Is...
I don't suppose Mr Marcus Avery's here. Oh. Oh, let's leave it. Let's leave it. Stick. Yeah, well, let's resume, resume at uh, one ten. Thank you, and turn that off. And thank you, everyone. One ten, we will resume.